Hello and welcome to FEM Expert. In today's tutorial, we're going to show you how to perform a Kenta liver uh, beam simulation utilizing ANSYS Workbench with the design modeler and uh, with beam type elements. So, to begin with, we're going to go into the Workbench module. This uh, simulation is going to be performed with the design modeler, uh, module modeler which is a 3D CAD by default program of ANSYS Workbench. So if you have a newer version of ANSYS, you might want to go to Tools, Options, Geometry Import, and change between the space claim to Design Model. I'm going to go back and hit Cancel here. So the, for the simulation, we're going to pull the static structural module to create a standalone system. And we're going to hit double click on Geometry. This is going to open the ANSYS Design Modeler, which is a 3D uh, ANSYS 3D pr default program. It's quite a handy program, not the most friendly user, but it's quite good to do uh, to do its job. So here we have the the program. We can we're going to create the the cantilever beam, like the beam type element. We're going to create it. There's a couple of methods. We're going to use a very simple one, which is going to go to create create a point. Here we're going to have the point one, the construction point, and we're going to change from files to manual input. So we're going to be this, the first one's going to be on the 0, 0, 0 coordinates. The point, as we can see, although it has been supposed to be created, it hasn't been generated. So we have to hit generate to change the light bulb, lightning bolt into a green tick. And now this operation has been created and this element has been created. So now we're going to go and create another point from manual input at zero at one meter in the X coordinate. We're going to hit generate. And as you can see here, we have both of the points. We have the two points for selection. You can, you won't be able to select it unless you choose the right filter. So we, if we have the, 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 vertex and point filter we can select them and here we would have the two points so now to create the line we're going to create the lines from points and on segments we're going to select one and the second one and hit apply as you can see as soon as we selected both of the points we have this green line and when we select apply it turns into a light blue but still hasn't been created it needs to go to generate. So all of the functions need to go through generate. So we have these three functions that depend on each other. So now we go to the part and body that have appeared and we can see in the line body, this is the line body. We don't have a cross section because we haven't defined a cross section and we're going to do that. So now we go to concept cross section. We're going to define a rectangular tube. The rectangular section is going to be this one. You can look at the dimensions here and you have the values on the left. It's being created. So the only thing we have to do is go to a line body and just assign this section. Uh, the name can be changed into that part or body. So now we have the geometry. We have at this point uh, the created geometry. So now we're going to go to workbench and we're going to click double click on model and wait for the mechanical module to open. So once we have uh, the mechanical module opened, we will have a geometry. If you try to select this geometry, you won't be able to unless you have the line filter selected. So we have the geometry here. You can see that line body. There's a lot of options and some information about this line geometry. By default, ANSYS has the materials introduced as a data database of materials. So you will have static structural structural steel by default. You can change these values if you want, but in general, it's, uh, it's quite handy in comparison to ANSYS APDL. So we're going to have the geometry introduced. And now what we have to do is kind of follow the tree structure to perform the simulation. So we're going to go to geometry to mesh. We're not going to change any of the options here. So we're just going to hit the right button and generate mesh, or you can hit update. So as soon as you do that, the mesh is going to be generated and you'll see that you have this realistic looking geometry, but it's just a, it's like the E shape in the mechanical APDL. 
it just looks like that because that's the section that we, we Im Im applied but otherwise it's just a line body if we want to see like that we can apply the show mess button and depends on the situation that we have but for the moment right now we're just going to work with the line so now we, that we have the meshing we want to go to the static structural and we want to apply the restriction oh, another one mention is anytime you up, click a button in this menus you'll see that on the top the toolbar items change and this is quite handy because that way you don't have a lot of menus and options that you don't need and it can be quite orientative when you want to perform a simulation so we're going to go to starter structural here we're going to hit the vertex and node filter we're going to select this line and we're going to apply a uh, we're going to apply a restriction on this node so we can select it and apply it or we can apply it and select it and we're going to do it that way so we go to structure structural we're going to Im input a support a fixed support and where it says geometry we select this vertex and then we hit apply so you can see there's a fixed support it tells you where it is and it tells you what type of geometry it has so now we go back to the static structural and we're going to apply a standard earth gravity on under inertias on the direction minus y just to make it easy for us to interpret it it was a minus z by default and as soon as you hit that and you have a load and a restriction you'll see that the thunderbolt has uh, the, the question mark has turned into thunderbolt so then we have a hit solve so once we have um, solved the model you might see under the solution information that in fact the ANSYS workbench so solution is, is in fact an ANSYS APDL solution because ANSYS workbench in mechanical is actually ANSYS APDL. So we're going to go back to solution and to plot the results you have to go to solution and choose from all of these options that you have here, the ones that you can choose because not all the elements allow you to plot all the results. So here we're going to go to deformation, we're going to hit total and then we're going to hit solve. And as you can see you have the deformation here, we can use the animation which is quite handy and here as you will see and one of the advantages of ANSYS uh, Warband compared to ANSYS APDL is that the graphics are inserted into the graphical card so we can actually move the model while the results are being plotted or animated so we're gonna stop this and another one of the advantages that ANSYS Warband has is that you can use units so we can go and change the units Two millimeters and here we have the displacement or you can use it in inches or whatever you will want but it will automatically change the value so you don't have to do all the math so as you can see here well we don't have uh, the stress vomises the stress values but what we do have in the ANSYS workbench is this beam tool and it has a lot of results in included directly and here the maximum combined stress would be the equivalent of um, the uh, von Mises the stress. So here we would have 1.4 megapascals at, uh, at the embedment and as you have to take into consideration that always this is a beam type element. So now what we're going to do is going to the beam results. These are results only good for the beam type elements and you have different results but we're gonna actually use the shear moment diagram. So in order to plot this diagram, we hit on it, and as soon as we have it, you will see then this, that it requires a path. So in order to obtain a path, we're going to go to Model, hit a Construction Geometry, under Construction Geometry, right-click, Insert, and Path. Under the type of path defi definition, we're going to go to Edge, select the Line Filter, select the line that we have defined and hit apply and you as you can see we will have defined a path from one to two on this line element so now we're going to go and uh, go to the total share and we're going to select the path that we just created the names can be changed for is uh, for easy ease of working especially when you have multiple elements you don't want to call the path path just like that but in this uh, situation uh, is not the case because it's a really simple model so we're going to hit o solve and we we'll, we can see that we obtain the total shear force then we obtain the total bending moment and the displacement of the beam 
on each one of the nodes. One of the big advantages of ANSYS Workbench is that all of these solutions stay stable, are stable, and we can, for example, if we modify the geometry, we're gonna go here into the mesh, mesh control, we're gonna put a different sizing, we're gonna select the geometry, and choose instead of uh, that size, a 10 millimeter meshing size. We do that change, we hit solve, and the program automatically is gonna mesh and it's gonna solve the model again. And we're gonna be able to see, well, the results that we obtain, they're gonna have variations based on the different meshing size, and also on the shear moment uh, diagrams, we're gonna have way more definition because we have way more elements, way more nodes in order to plot these results. So this would be it for today's tutorial. We hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial and if you find the information uh, good, please share our channel, subscribe to the channel and like our videos. Thank you for your attention.